Touchstones of Hope is a philosophy. It's not a program, it's not an event, it's not a cultural appreciation moment. It is about weaving fundamental principles, principles our elders and young people and families have been talking about for centuries, into the actual work of doing child protection. So the five principles are self-determination. Now that's a simple principle. It means that people themselves are in the best position to make decisions about their children. It's been the one that social work has struggled with the most. Marie Batiste, the great academic, says that for thousands of years, Aboriginal people looked after their own children in their own self-determining ways. And then non-Aboriginal people took over and there's been devastating results. We're now at a place where non-Aboriginal people tell Aboriginal people how to look after their children and we need to close that circle and put Aboriginal people back in the centre. And that's what Touchstones does. The other one is culture and language. That's not only recognising that culture and language is important for Aboriginal children and their families, but it's also acknowledging that the child welfare system itself is culturally loaded. It has an accent mostly informed by Western, uh, uh, British and French cultures. Holistic response. As child protection workers, we walk into families and we make a judgment at the moment. You know, I have removed many children and they come back to you 10, 20 years later and they'll say things like, you promised me a better life. That may have been the best decision for that moment, but when I was 10 and I really wanted someone there for my birthday party, it wasn't the best decision for me. So we need to look at children within the context of family and community. Structural interventions, that's making sure that we are tackling the risk factors for children that are beyond the ability of families to control on their own. Things like being poor. There's not very much you can do about being poor on your own. You need the support of others in order to lift yourself out of poverty and provide the basic needs for your children. And the final one is non-discrimination. What that means is that we don't give First Nations, Métis and Inuit children less services or culturally inappropriate services because they're Aboriginal. And we know this is a particular problem on reserves. Now those are the principles. So when you're a child protection worker, you should be flowing through those five principles in everything that you're doing. But the reality is that child protection itself because grows out of a colonial history. It is a colonial byproduct. And so we need ways of being able to inform it in reconciliation. So it's positioned within a four phase process. Number one is learning. That means that we learn from the past. You know, my friend uh, John Malloy, the historian, says the only thing we've learned from the 60s scoop in residential schools is to be more efficient at removing First Nations children. We need to get much better at learning from the past and changing our practice. The second is acknowledging. That means not only knowing what happened in the past, but acknowledging it and taking active efforts to, to prevent it. Restoring is the next phase. That understands that we can't turn back the harms on everything we've done. But for those things that we can make better, let's do that. And the last phase is relating. And that means that we must be, as Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal peoples, ever vigilant of our practice to make sure that we're not infusing colonial uh, processes or continuing wrongdoing in the future. The First Nations Child and Family Caring Society has worked with First Nations communities, elders, young people, uh, families, foster parents, to create a community toolkit that helps everybody with this movement, right from the very place about how do you have the discussion about what touchstones are in your community and help make the decision about whether this is right to you, right on into actually engaging your communities in developing the visions of healthy children, and most importantly, developing implementation plans that make this real. If you are going to just draw out a vision and not implement it, this is not the program for you because this is meant to make real changes in the lives of children every single day. It's been used uh, in Northern British Columbia, is now being adopted in other regions in British Columbia, in Ontario, in Taiwan, and most recently in the United States by Native American and Alaska Native peoples who have partnered with the Kellogg Foundation to spread the Touchstones movement throughout the United States. So you can find out more about these programs on our websites, and most importantly, you can start today to make a difference in your community and do real work that benefits kids.